to think of him and remember him fondly um, as we speak. Our opening words. We are gathered here to honor, to remember, to celebrate, to love. Up. And most of all, to say thank you for the life of William Bill Becker. We gather together from the diversity of our grieving and the warmth of this community, giving stubborn witness that in times of sadness, there is room for laughter. And in times of sorrow, there can be joy. May we hold fast to the conviction that how we live matters and that a caring world surrounds us all. Bill's daughter, Lisa Becker Primer, will now welcome us. Hi, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, it means the world to me that you're all here to celebrate my dad and his life and all he did. He did so much and um, he deserves a big party. So I hope we all party tonight, or today yeah. and tonight. Um, uh, there are many things to look at quickly in the yard. I just wanted to let you know. Um, his sculpture are out in the garden. They're all on pedestals um, and fit, uh, hooks, the, uh, the hooks, <laughs> his sculptures are hanging. And then his artwork is on the fence, and there's a table of his sketching um, in the back there. And then this is a collage here of, of photos for everybody to enjoy. Um, okay. I just wanted to say I want to welcome everyone to my dad's celebration of life ceremony. I want to thank the universe for allowing us to have you in our lives. I want to tell you how grateful. I am to you for all the things that you've done and continue to do for us. Dad, you're my best friend and I will miss you very much. We had so much fun together and I will cherish my memories and all the fun times that we had. I will keep your dreams alive, Dad, and I will make the world remember and honor you. I will love you always. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Breathe. My, um, my dad um, loved Native American traditions and Mother Earth, and this is an earth prayer. Oh, great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds, and whose breath gives life to all the world. Hear me, I am small and weak. I need your strength and your wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things that you have made and my ears shape Sorry, my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I may understand the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. So when life fades as the fading sunset, my spirit may come to you without any shame. John says we're switching sound to this microphone, so. Thank you for being here. There are three readings for today's service. The first is by Ernest Sommerfeld, and this reading lifts up the idea of creating a life of art and craft. There are people who so live that they give us a quality of human life. 
They show us what it is to be a man at his best in some particular. They cheer us even when our own lives do not dwell on that particular. We who are not composers hear the music and are moved because that music is in us also. We have a talent for recognition. So it is that our lives are enriched in so many ways by so many people. How fortunate to be one of those who has the opportunity for craftsmanship and uses that opportunity with both love and integrity. For fine craftsmanship, com craftsmanship comes out of fine men. And every good workman, every artist and craftsman brings us the gift of form. The dream brought to reality, the word made flesh and sometimes of glass or fabric or wood. How can love speak at all except if it speak to us through form? This is love's ultimate gift. I thought that reminded me of your dad. Absolutely. The second reading um, is from the words of Hildegard of Bingen. She was a very radical theologian. It speaks of the love of the earth, and this is a prime force of Bill's life. I am the one whose praise echoes on high. I adorn all the earth. I am the breeze that nurtures all things green. I encourage blossoms to flourish with ripening fruits. I am led by the spirit to feed the purest streams. I am the rain coming from the dew that causes the grasses to laugh with the joy of life. I call forth tears, the aroma of holy work. I am the yearning for good. And this next one is, I can never read this one without crying, so <laughs> anyway, it's called Music I Heard With You by Conrad Eichen. Music I heard with you was more than music, and bread I broke with you was more than bread. Now that I am without you, all is desolate. All that was once so beautiful is dead. Your hands once touched this table and this silver, and I have seen your fingers hold this glass. These things do not remember you, beloved, and yet your touch upon them will not pass. For it was in my heart that you moved among them and blessed them with your hands and with your eyes, and in my heart they will remember you always. They knew you once, O oh, beautiful, and wise. To capture a life in a few minutes is an impossibility. In the case of Bill Becker, this is especially dif difficult, daunting even. Whatever words I say will not do justice to the brilliance, creativity, and the life of Bill Becker. Lisa sent me three pages of accomplishments of Bill's. <laughs> he did that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he did. Um, and you might say, three pages, three pages. Well, I want to tell you that those pages were made for mice. Mice could read those pages. That's how much stuff is on them. <laughs> I had to get a magnifying glass. Um, and they tell of the life of his artistry and creativity from the 1950s through 2014. I knew Bill from church, the Unitarian Universalist Community Church in Park Forest. I knew him as a delightful person who shook my hand after worship and always had something pleasant to say with a reassuring smile. I had no idea the extent to which his creativity and unique vision has impacted our world. He just didn't brag about himself or his accomplishments. He just didn't do that. So I have had a pang of both delight in learning about him and regret that I did not know all this beforehand. And then I think, just think of the conversations I could have had with him if I had known <laughs> what he was up to. All right. <laughs> He was born on August 10th in 1941, and he died on May 6, 2021. He grew up in Evanston with his three sisters, 
Lucy, Kathy, and Susan, and they're here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Wave, yeah, there you go. All right, it yeah. Was, it was Wilmette, sorry. Well, Wilmette, sorry, all right. That's okay. As a kid, he loved baseball. In 1954, on the opening day of the Wilmette Little League Park, he won and pitched a two-game, uh, two-hit game, which was broadcast on WGN Radio. <laughs> Bill caddied at the Indian Hill Country Club. His first job was as a draftsman while he attended New Trier High School. When he graduated from high school, he had a cr uh, credits for college, two years in mechanical drafting, and one year in engineering. That just boggles my mind. He was accepted at Michigan State in East Lansing, Michigan, and because they wanted him so much as a student, they waived the out-of-state out tuition requirement and gave him an in-state scholarship. At some point, Bill dropped the second L in Bill and became a B-I-L. Um, the moniker expressed both his creativity and his uniqueness. Absolutely. <laughs> In 1963, Bill graduated with honors from MSU. He had a summer internship at Motorola and then attended and received a Master's of Fine Arts from Cranbrook, Cranbrook Academy in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. From 67 to 74, Bill became an instructor at UIC and assisted Buckminster Fuller in constructing modular play domes. In 1969, Bill filed for his first patent for Cube. Q-U-B-E, a modular furniture system. It's yeah, so here. It's right there. In the middle okay. here. Yeah. Okay. This information so far is on one third of one of the three pages when it was sent me. We could be here very well through the darkness tonight. Uh, Bill was a man of both accomplishment and vision. He taught at UIC and beginning in the 70s, he traveled the world working on projects such as his own cube modular furnishing designs, as well as geodesic domes, renewable energy wind towers with Buckminster Fuller. At one point, he proposed to the United Nations an adaptable emergency shelter system for use in areas where floods had occurred. Think about that. At age 33, he was nominated for tenure at UIC, at the same time, he was appointed the deputy director at UIC's School of Arts and Design. He went from being a protege of Buckminster Fuller's to being a colleague, and then he became part of Fuller's World USA Game Network. This is the team that helped design, execute, and create all of Fuller's dreams. Wind energy, solar energy, and alternative energy systems were among Bill's designs. He became a member of the Midwest Energy Alternatives Network at Governor State. At the same time he was awarded tenure, he was promoted to assistant professor and chair of the Industrial Design Program at UIC. He also received a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to build a solar heated greenhouse called Eden Space. I think the design is over there on the wall. Um, he then received another NEA grant to build the first That's urban wind generator Eden. for the, the Evanston Environmental UK. Association. There are lists of community energy groups he worked with and he designed projects for, and there, a lot of them are over on those tables. Um, and his idea was to conserve and preserve energy so that we could all live more efficiently. To put it in its plainest terms, Bill loved the earth. He wanted to protect it and use the resources of wind and solar energy to save our planet and to use natural energy resources to both heat and cool physical structures and buildings. In the 80s, he received funding for another NEA grant, a project to continue his design in renewable energy. There are lists and lists of accomplishments in Bill's life. Let me give you just a few of them. A solar heated balloon for the GSU Energy Fair demo. He designed a solar heated greenhouse for CMT. He co-wrote the City Greenhouse book. He received a GSU grant to design the Earth Star global foldable map. The design is over there, the last one, and one of the maps is all folded up on a pedestal over in front of the house over there. 
He received, a, listen to this one, he received a grant from the Chicago Lung Association to design a solar bike which he tested in a 250 mile run and then when he completed his ride, he took Governor Jim Thompson out for a spin. <laughs> He designed the solar, solar panels for the roofs of pontoon boats so that the boats would have renewable energy. He designed the Sunseeker invisible solar plane, which was used for covert surveillance during the uh, Kuwait War. He designed sol a solar uh, touring vehicle for the 1991 Chicago World's Fair. That's just part of the list. During this time, he also saved a fish, fish hatchery from urban development in Plymouth, Wisconsin. He set up both the first and second student design competitions for the National Housewares Manufacturers Com Competition at McCormick Place in 1991 and 1992. Did he sleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the next 10 years, Bill was involved in numerous patents, projects, designs, and creation for wind, solar, and other ecological projects in Silver Springs in East Troy, Wisconsin, and Round Lake in Chicago, Illinois, including designing the Spring Ledge Ecological Conference Center. For the next decade, Bill set up his own design firm, William S. Becker, in Park Forest, Illinois. He applied for numerous patents for wind power design, uh, projects and zero and solar renewable energy designs for such companies as PepsiCo, Sloan Valve Company, and the Social Security Administration Building in Chicago. Those are on the wall here. Yes. <laughs> he designed a solar phone for use in India where there is no electrical grid. He assisted in the design for the highway solar renewable energy designs that are now being used in high, on highways across the nation. You know the lights that come on when it's dark and are run by solar energy? And on the way here, I went by one of the stop signs that has a solar panel on it that blinks when you stop at it. He worked with SC Johnson, Motorola, GE, Kimberly Clark on projects for their companies. But more than his intellectual acumen and creativity and his list of accomplishments, is the way he lived his life. His daughter, Lisa, wrote this to describe her father. In his childhood, she said, he loved these things. I know he loved playing in his little league sports team. He loved speed skating in January, up to January without a shirt on. He loved sleeping outside. He would try every year to sleep outside until January 1st, but his mom would always make him come inside before Christmas. <laughs> he loved skitching, that's where you hold onto the bumper of a car and get a free ride behind cars with his buddies after it snowed. He loved drawing cartoons of his teachers and making everyone laugh. Lisa continues describing her own childhood. When I was a kid, we always went camping every summer. Dad loved tents and loved the challenge of living outside. Dad was the best canoeer ever. <laughs> we was. loved taking the canoe out on the river every year. Dad loved gardening and living off the land. Together with my mom, they always had an organic garden and they, that they lived off from summer to Christmas. Dad loved teaching us how to draw, how to build things, and he especially loved Mother Earth. His son Chris worked with his dad and in his dad's company. They were a team of design and accomplishment of the designs. Chris said, my dad taught me so many lessons. We learned together as well. I continue our learning by sharing what he and I learned with others. My loss of my dad is physical only. He is with me every day and I will continue to pass on what he taught me. Nice, that was nice. Bill loved music. Nice, Lisa. His favorite band is here today. His son-in-law, oh. John Primer, of John Primer, and the real deal. And Yay. also his granddaughter, Aaliyah, will Point be two. performing for us on this afternoon. Yay. Some of, and they'll be performing some of Bill's favorite music by his favorite Yay. people and his favorite band. Bill was a Unitarian Universalist, a longtime member of the UUCC of Park Forest. As such, he created a faith that spanned and included Native American faith, Buddhism, and earth-based spiritualities. As Lisa and I communicated about this service, we decided that as a Buddhist, 
Bill would not want to miss this celebration. Oh, no. <laughs> so we are sure, we are sure that he is here somewhere. He's here, absolutely. He might be up in the tree over there, or on the roof, or <laughs> sitting on one of sitting his right sculptures. Sitting right here. Sitting right there. He's by the red wine over there. <laughs> <laughs> he would love the music. He would delight that this memorial ceremony is being held out of doors, celebrating both him and his love of the natural world. Lisa and I muse that Bill, if it is all possible, is smiling and looking at us yeah. all and enjoying right. yeah. the stories yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. As we bask in the sun and feel the wind harnessing these elements in his honor and memory. Mm -hmm. There is no way to capture the vitality or creativity of such a man as Bill Becker. He changed our world and, and, and each of us. We move through our lives and we are touched by his inventions. I want you to know the next time I see a wind turbine or view a solar panel or pass a highway sign or a stop sign with a solar renewable energy panel attached to it, I will say, thank you, Bill. Thank you for sharing your fine mind and your creative skills with this world. And when I see those things, I'm just gonna touch my heart in thankful tribute. Amen. Amen. Blessed be and shalom. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is that we're going to listen to a piece of music. And what, you don't have to stay in your chairs for this. You can go in and get some food. You can walk around and look. And we're going to have several musical breaks in, in, interspersed with those of you who would like to tell a story or two. So you can put something on your chair so nobody takes your seat, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. Um, if if everybody could enjoy the his sculpture in the yard, walk around, and um, honestly, if anyone anyone at all wants to come and say a word or two, the floor is open to anybody. A story, a joke, something he said, anything. Um, and then Aaliyah is going to sing. Okay. And well, we're going to have a piece of music now, and then we'll, when the music stops, um, we'll say that some of you can come forward, and then we're going to have, there's going to be like three pieces of music, so you have a lot of time to think and, and enjoy before you get up and talk. So let's enjoy the music. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. 